Welcome to Reykjavík Greipans newscast. My name is Valur Grettisson. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavík Greipan. Polly is not with me today because we're in sight of Hallgrims Kirkja. I'll tell you about her a little bit later in the, in the newscast. Uh, but uh, I have to keep my voice a little bit low, lower than usual, uh, which is perhaps fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just want to remind you, of course, uh, our High Five Club, if you want to support us. Uh, and of course, our online shop and our homepage, Reykjavik Grapevine, no, sorry, grapevine.is, uh, where you can see all of this news and more, and in much better English than I'm going to tell you about it now. So, let's start with the news. Uh, when it comes to COVID, we had two domestic cases yesterday. This is within the margins, of course. We've had from zero to uh, four past a uh, couple of days. Uh, but the borders are still a problem. We had 10 uh, people that came to Iceland that were, uh, had uh, COVID. Uh, so <coughs> we, we have to be stronger there, of course. Uh, right now, we have uh, 5,000 people have gotten vaccinated. Uh, and we are in the 14th place when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, uh, vaccinating the nation. And the first place is like Israel, then the Saudi Arabians, uh, and then Bahrain, uh, and so on. And the U.S. is even higher than we are, and it's, it's going quite slowly actually. It could be much better. Uh, also. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to all the news, basically, because there's not basically much to say about COVID right now. We're doing so well. Look at this church, though. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Guðjón Samuelsson actually uh, designed this church. He was like a, he's like a, the most famous architect in Iceland. And he did this uh, when he was like a city architect, when we, we used to have one. Uh, and he also made the, the, the National Theatre in Iceland, the more built this. Uh, incredibly fascinating character. And you can see like this was built like, I, th I think it took uh, around 70 years just to build, the, like to finish the house. But this is the biggest church in Iceland and like the had church. And you of course know this church much better from the, uh, from the outside. But you can see how like high and wide it is. It's like, it's beautiful. The reason we're here is because there was a horrible accident uh, in the west of Iceland. A Polish family was coming from, uh, from abroad and they came to Iceland. Uh, and after a long flight, they, it's like when you come to Iceland, you have to designate a place where you're going to quarantine. And when it comes to immigration in Iceland, uh, it's probably very unlikely when you, unlike when you're Icelandic, you, you can p perhaps choose more places. You have like parents and nieces and friends and so on. So they had to drive straight to their hometown, Flateri. And from uh, the international airport to Flateri, it takes up to like 10 hours to drive. But what happened uh, in the West Fjords, which are like uh, very, very well rough right now, a lot of ice, snow and, and icy roads, uh, so what happened is there was an accident and the car ended up in the ocean. Uh, the thing is that people came there, of course, uh, there's passenger pass, passing by, and they, of course, came and helped the people. But uh, what happened is that they couldn't call for help because uh, the, the, like the cell phone signals is not in a lot of places in Iceland. So what happened is that, uh, well, uh, yeah, the, the wife died uh, this weekend and the 11 year old boy also. Uh, the, the father is still alive, uh, but he is still at the hospital. And it's a, it's a big tragedy for the Icelandic nation. And we have uh, also, if you want to more information about it, you can go to our homepage, grapevine.is. There is a support, uh, you can support them financially if you're the father. Uh, and I know that a lot of Icelanders have done this. So this is probably the place that more people know. This is where you go if you want to go to the, uh, to the, what do you call it? To the towers. Towers there, right? Yeah. So, uh, th this has sparked quite a debate. 
Yeah, there is Polly. Hey. <laughs> She has to wait, of course. No, you go here. This has sparked quite a debate uh, because uh, the cell towers are not, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, like the, the government says they need to have better, uh, better uh, connection all around the country. So we have to see what happens. Also, there have been doctors and others that have criticized that we are not, uh, uh, that we should offer people to sleep uh, somewhere around the airport. Uh, they ate, right? Uh, but, uh, uh, but it wasn't uh, an option. It, it, is, it isn't an option right now. Because it's like, it's kind of cruel to fly for five hours to Iceland and being tired with a kid and then drive for another eight to 10 hours to your hometown. It's, it's, it's I mean, this, this was, uh, feels like an accident that we could have avoided. So, uh, and to another news, uh, the tourist industry is quite concerned about the summer, uh, understandably so. Whoa. So if you will be here over the summer, you will probably visit this place, this is the, the tower. Uh, and as you can see, it's like, it's, this is the clock tower here. You can see that this is what you see outside, of course. Uh, yeah, but the thing is that uh, the vaccination, like I said before, is not going fast enough. It could be much quicker, but we have vaccinated 5,000 people, which is uh, just a portion of the nation. So what we need, uh, what uh, the travel industry need now is to rely once more on the Icelandic travelers. And that's not a good situation to be at because Icelandic travelers, uh, we travel differently. We don't go that much to the hotels. Uh, we don't, uh, and we, we don't go to the same like tours that most of the tourists of course t take. So it's, uh, it's a, we could say that if it doesn't get better, in the next weeks or months, uh, it's, it's very likely that the economy will get much worse uh, for the travel industry. <clears throat> uh, also, uh, and finally, and this is an odd, odd story actually, Guðmundur uh, Felix Gretarsson uh, is the first person in the world to receive, uh, what would you call it, a transplant of both arms. Whoa, windy up here. Uh, Guðmundur Felix is quite well known in Iceland. He had an accident in 1998 uh, because of, uh, there was like power lines. He, uh, and the, 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 he was like an electrician and the power line, uh, he got electricity through him and he lost both of his hands. A tragic uh, thing that happened. Iceland is actually, uh, we had a, like a, a crowd fund for him and he, fund, he got like, a, tens of millions out of it, which was good. And now it's becoming like, it's putting into good, in good action right now because he's, he got new hands uh, and he, he got them sewed on, <laughs> I think that's the correct term, uh, in France. Uh, and this means that, uh, that Guillaume de Felix has both of his hands. And this is remarkable because he's the first person in the world that ever, has ever done this. Also, he got blood in his finger, which means that uh, there is, I mean, time has to tell, Jesus, but it's, there is a true possibility that he will be able to perhaps get some strength into the arms. But it's impossible to say anything about it, of course. Wow. Now this is Iceland for you, man. <laughs> so, uh, in other news, uh, there is a member of the parliament, Rosa Björk Brynjólsdóttir. She has proposed that we make, uh, make it illegal, like it has been in some other countries, to deny the Holocaust. This is done because of good reason. Uh, there was a debate about this uh, some months ago in Iceland, uh, when there was, there was a book published uh, which deni denied this, and it became uh, quite controversial. Uh, even an MP for the Pirate Party said that uh, it was protected by the, 
what do you call it, like uh, protected by the, the right to the freedom of speech. But not everybody is on the same page. And you can see even some countries have banned this. This is, of course, something that would not probably happen. Uh, but it shows. Push it. But the point of this is more or less to uh, remind people that like, I hate against uh, uh, Jews uh, and, uh, and other minority groups is quite uh, real right now. But this is it, more or less, for the, today's newscast. Uh, this has been a very interesting thing. Perhaps uh, we go back down and show a little bit more of the church. Uh, I've been here before. It's like. Uh, it's quite unique, actually, to be here. It's very fun to see Reykjavik from above. Uh, and it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an experience. Also, like, uh, around uh, 6 to 70 percent of the nation is in this National Church of Iceland. So we are, like, when we're born, we're automatically registered into the church. Uh, so it's like Iceland is very uh, a Christian society, although we often say that we are heathen, more or less. And we are in some sense. But uh, it was interesting then when we were passing a vote about the Constitution uh, for like a, a, almost 10 years ago. And then the Icelanders were asked if they wanted to separate the church and the, and the, and the government. And surprisingly, people did not want this. So Icelanders do like their national church. So. But thank you, and goodbye, and see you next time. And thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like it. And uh, next time, I'll take Polly with me.